So we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I, I'm Tate Elders. I represent the uh, the biological father, Your Honor, Eric. Just Teresa Ratliff for the unknown father. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ryan Terman for respondent mother. Stacy's a child. You can call it for shortness. I'd call Daniel McCarthy, Your Honor. I don't know if you need to hear this out loud, but um, I haven't had any contact with Mr. Rangel and he's not present today. He's not, he wrote me a letter last August. That's the last I've heard from him. I don't know where he is. All right. All right, okay. you may proceed. Mr. McArthur, would you state your name for the record, please? My name is Charles Daniel MacArthur. And Mr. McArthur, how are you employed? I'm employed with the Department of Family and Protective Services as an investigative supervisor. And how are you familiar with that case? This case was worked by one of my investigators by the name of Sherika Scotland. Okay. And during, now Ms. Scotland is no longer with the department, is that correct? That is correct. And during um, her working this case, did you were her supervisor? I was. Um, during, during her working this case, uh, did she constantly um, staff this with you and talk to you about what was going on with the case? Yes. Um, did y'all do staffings as far as how to handle a case moving forward as uh, issues arose? Yes. Um, were these staffings done um, around at or around the time of everything that was happening? Yes, they were done throughout the case. All throughout the case. Um, does the department in St. Francis regularly keep records in their normal course of business? Oh, we do. Okay. Um, are those, and those records are kept in the ordinary course? Yes. Are the entries made at or around the time of the events? They are. Um, are they made by someone with personal knowledge of the events happening? Yes. Uh, did you have access to those records? I do. Um, are you a custodian of records? I am. Um, have you had the opportunity to review the records Um as far as the investigative reports, affidavits, and as they were filed and recent? Yes. Um, so how did the department become involved in this case? We became involved after we received some worries regarding the safety of, of a newborn. So okay. we received an intake. Okay. And it was a newborn that had, um, had the newborn uh, tested positive for any drugs? Yes. Okay. And um, did the Worker made contact with the parents. She did. And who was the uh, who was found to be the mother? The mother was found to be Haley Rangel. Okay. And do you remember who the father's name was? Well, she gave us a potential father of Eric with an A Rangel, okay. uh, but there was also some other potential fathers. Okay. Um, were was. Eric and Haley, do you know were they married at the time? Um, I, I I don't remember that, but they I'm guessing since they had the same last name. Okay. Um, now Eric was originally pled into this case as presumed father. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, during during investigation, did you um, were you in any of the meetings, uh, family team meetings, anything like that with the parents? I was. Okay. Um, did did either, during any of those meetings did either of the parents admit to any drug use? They both did admit to drug use. Okay. Um, what type of drug use did they admit? To? Uh, they discussed uh, the, the our biggest concern was the fentanyl drug use that they had admitted to. Okay. Um, did both parents uh, test for the department at any time? They did. Okay. And were those um, did those tests come back positive or negative? They did come back positive. Okay. Um, did they also admit to methamphetamine use? They did. Okay. Um, at any time, did the did either parent express concern over whether at any time whether Eric was actually the biological father? Yes, there were some concerns on whether he was the father or not. Okay. Um, and not to get into any of the details of it, but there was some mention of a separation at one time and something possibly happening to Ms. Rangel that Eric may not be the father. Is that correct? 
That is correct. So the child was removed due to drug exposure and being born positive. Is that correct? Yes. And it was causing a potential physical and health problem with the child? Yeah, there were some severe withdrawal symptoms. Okay. And was that, do we know, was that due to the fentanyl? We we do believe that it was. And according to what I think the doctor had said, and the child actually had to go on, I think, morphine, which is, is unusual and pretty serious um, to help with those withdrawal symptoms. Okay. And so that, that was to combat some of the, the shaking, the other issues that come on with the uh, withdrawals? Yes. Okay. Um, did, did either parent at the time have any, uh, or did Eric, did he, was he in any sort of, uh, legal issues at the time? Was he on probation, parole? He was on probation, my understanding. Okay. Um, yes, just a few. Uh, sir, did you mention there might be other potential fathers other than, uh, Mr. Rangel? Uh, did the department look into any of those named individuals? There were none named. Um, it was just the possibility uh, due to some things that she had said that had happened to her during while they were split up. All right. Did mother provide any? She did not provide any other names. I'm sorry. She, she did not give us any names. Okay. Thank you. Pass the witness. Ms. Sabella? I have no questions, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Trout, any further questions for Mr. McCarthy? None for Mr. McCarthy. Yeah. Okay. A anybody have any objection if Mr. MacArthur leaves at this time? No, no objection. objection. No objection. All right. You call your next witness. You called Mario Zavala. And Mr. Zavala, how are you employed? I'm a premises specialist for St. Francis. And are you familiar with the case yes, involving the trial? And how are you familiar with that case? I'm the caseworker. I've been the caseworker since the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Mother's name in this case is Haley Rangel. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Her real quick. Did the mother execute an affidavit of voluntary relinquishment on um, April 3rd of 2023? Yes, sir. And <clears throat> have you had the opportunity to view that relinquishment? Yes, sir. Um, did the mother respond, uh, sign the relinquishment? Yes, sir. Were there two witnesses to that relinquishment? Yes, sir. Is it, was it notarized? Yes, sir. Has the uh, uh, department consented to being the designated managing conservator of the child? Yes, sir. Was that, um, was that affidavit of relinquishment filed with the court on April 3rd? Yes, sir. Um, Judge, we'd ask that the court take judicial notice of the affidavit of voluntary relinquishment um, of the parental rights of the child. No objection. No objection. No objection. No objection. All right, I'll take judicial notice of uh, the affidavit of voluntary relinquishment of parental rights that was executed by Haley Rangel regarding the child Dominic, uh, which has been signed, witnessed, notarized, uh, and filed. Mr. Zavala, is the department asking today that the court terminate the parental rights of Haley Rangel as, um, based upon the affidavit of voluntary relinquishment? Yes, sir. And do you believe that that is in the best interest of the child? Yes, sir. As to the father, have you had the father's name or the presumed father that was filed into the case's name was Eric Rangel. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Have you had throughout the case, have you had contact with Mr. Rangel? Yes, sir. In person. Okay. Um, currently, do you know where Mr. Rangel is? I do not. Okay. Um, could you tell me, so this case was started a little over about a year ago. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, when was the last time that Mr. Rangel had any visitation with the child? He never had not one visitation. Okay. Um, did he ever call to try to set up any visitation or get something worked out? No. Um, do you know where he has been throughout the case? Yes, sir. Where is that? Uh, majority of the case, um, he was incarcerated um, and he was released on January sixth i believe of this year and since then i've lost contact and you so since he's been released from jail you've not had any contact with him no sir no, no, he, no one word have you had any messages emails anything has he has he tried to reach out at any time the, the only time i ever got anything from him was when he was 
about to leave uh, from prison. And ever since then, I've nothing. I've reached out to him in any way possible and I have nothing back. When he reached out to you before, did he did he give any indication of where he would be going when he got out? Um, no, we have talked, though, about him coming back to Amarillo. Um, I've even informed him that if he needed a ride back to go straight into rehab, that I was willing to drive over there right. on my own time and pick him up. And he never responded. OK. Um, during the course of this case, did um, the department generate family plans of service? Yes, sir. Uh, did you generate any family plans of service for the father? I did. Okay. Um, did you ever have a chance to go over that with him and to let him know what, was, what those were? Yes, sir. Uh, did you get the exhibits that I sent out? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and judge, I had sent out number one and number two. Mr. Rangels is number two. Um, we can change that to number one since I won't be inputting the other family plan, but um could you look at what's marked exhibit two at this time? Uh, you are able to look at exhibit number two? Yes, sir. Um, what is exhibit number two? He's waiting for that to open up. I just want, as a clarification, yes, I, I'm showing that Eric Rangel was a presumed father. Yes, ma'am. They, they were married. I believe that's correct, John. Ch child yes. born during the marriage. Yes, ma'am. But we had this other issue, and we don't have to get into the specific, specifics of that, where there was reason to believe that someone else could have been the father. That's correct, Jim. Okay. All right. I just want to make the record clear, though. He is a presumed father. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, it's still kind of spin wheeling. So the exhibit two that you, that you sent to me um, was the family plan. And is that the family plan for Eric Rango? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, has that, looking at that exhibit, has it been offered in any type of way? No, sir. Is an accurate copy of the family plan that y'all generated for and filed with the court? Yes, sir. Um, was the service, family plans of service, were they made in order of the court? Yes, sir. Um, judge, I'd like to enter exhibit number two as the family plan of service for Eric Rangel. Thank you, Honor. Um, Mr. Zavala, why are family plans of service generated? Uh, so that we can have reunification. And so these are a list of certain services tailored to the uh, parents involved in the case in order to work toward reunification. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and these were generated for uh, the presumed father, Eric Ringo. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, during the course of this case, did Mr. Rangel ever work any services? No, sir. Did he ever attempt to work any services? No, sir. So um, during the course, none of what was in this family plan of service that was generated for him, uh, which I believe you testified earlier that you had gone over with him, um, was ever started or were, or completed by him. Yeah, nothing, sir. Um, did how long was Mr. Rangel in prison? You know, or jail? Um, I believe it was from August to. I believe it was from August till January 6th. Okay. Um, of which year? I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, August of 2022 to um, August uh, to January 6th, 2023. Um, did he ever, during any of your contact with him while he was in jail, did he um, ever ask about any services or anything he could do while he was in jail? No, sir. Uh, did he ever inquire as to how the child was doing? Yeah, he did. Uh, did he ever ask for when he got out any visitations or anything? He did. Okay. Um, but since he's been let out, he has not contacted you to go forward with that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, now, there was some discussion earlier um, that some issues happened, so there may not, he may not be the, either of those presumed father, he may not be the biological father. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did he ever mention to you um, that he may not be? He wrote me a letter stating that he was not the father okay. and he knew he was not the father. Okay. Um, in any of your conversations with the mother, did she ever mention that she was not sure if he was? She mentioned to me that he was not the father. Okay. Um, so the court also ordered a um, paternity test. Is that correct? 
Yes, sir. Did uh, Mr. Rangel ever participate in that fraternity testing? No, sir. No. Um, do you, are you aware of a fraternity or fraternity registry search that was run? Yeah, you were of that. Yes. Okay. Um, and was the fraternity registry? Did it ever come? Did it come back with any um, potential fathers on that? Anybody that no, registered? No, sir. Judge, I'd have support to take judicial notice of fraternity registry search that was filed. Um, July 22nd of 2022 that indicates no fathers registered. Any objection? No objection. I'm sorry, no objection. No objection, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Vollock, today, um, is the department asking that the court terminate the parental rights of Eric uh, Rangel based upon constructive abandonment by not working any services, not trying to meet with the child, having no visitations with the child during this time? Yes, sir. And are they also asking uh, on the grounds of fair to work services throughout the case? Yes, sir. And as far as to any unknown father uh, asking the court to terminate any rights to any possible unknown fathers for failure to register with the fraternity registry? Yes, sir. And do we believe that that is in the best interest of the child at this time? Yes, sir. I passed the witness, Your Honor. Uh, sir, in that letter that you received from Mr. Rangel, did he mention any names about uh, other potential fathers for the child? He did not. Okay. And I believe you've already testified mom didn't have any other names as well, correct? Correct. Thank you. Pass the witness. All right. And Ms. Zavala. Um, Mr. Zavala, you said that you met with him in person. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Where, where did you meet with him? Um, I met with him at Potter County, Joe. And then he was able to write you at least one letter, if not more. Oh, I apologize on that, ma'am. I met with him in person at Randall County, Joe. Okay. And yes, he yes, he did write me some letters. So he knows your name and he knows your contact information. Even if he was released without that information, would he know your Mario Zavala in Amarillo, St. Francis? He would. Um, so he would be able to locate you even if he didn't get to take the phone number with you, with him. Correct. And you haven't received any messages or missed calls um, from him? No, ma'am. I, pa I pass the witness. All right. Any further questions for Mr. Zavala? I got a couple of questions real quick, Yanni. Mr. Zavala, how is the child doing? Uh, Dominique is doing absolutely wonderful uh, where he's at right now. Okay. Um, and just for education purposes, the placement at this time, are they possibly adopted or do we know? Like, are they, are they wanting to adopt or are they? Yeah. So they are possible adoption placement. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. But the child's doing well. He's developing well. He's growing well. Yeah. He graduated from his ECI program. So he's, he's completed that. Okay. So he's, he's doing there. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Um, in regards, and I, I didn't ask this, but in regards to mother, um, we're asking to terminate on the affidavit of relinquishment and we're willing to waive all of the grounds uh, based upon the affidavit of relinquishment. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, then. Um, Department rest. Department rest, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Terman, anything today? Uh, no, Judge, I'd rest and close. I would like to say something, if that's at all possible. Yeah, let me get through just just real quick, and then I will I'll let you let you speak. Hang on, Mr. Eldridge, any anything to present? On behalf of the father, uh, Eric Rangel, nothing, nothing, Your Honor. And Ms. Ratliff, nothing further, Judge. Nothing to add. I rest. All right, and uh, Ms. Zavala, any witnesses to present? No witnesses, Your Honor. Okay, I'm going to allow mom to address the court and then I'll take your recommendation. So, Ms. Rangel, you can unmute. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to say to this court that, yes, I did relinquish my rights in the best interest of Dominic Rangel. My hopes are that the current placement for him would become an adoptive option. The biggest reason that I did not um, fight to take Dominic or to have him placed with any of my family members or extended family members is that myself included and my family members all battle with addiction. I am currently almost 10 months clean 
and sober working a program. Um, but my family is not, um, neither are any of my extended family members. I would be in his case, the lesser of two evils. Uh, okay, Ms. Rangel, if you can hear me, you might try turning your video. Oh, we just lost her. Okay. We'll give her just a minute. Judge, while she's doing that, I'm, I'm sorry, it wasn't clear to me. Are we on YouTube right now? We are. I'm not entirely sure what she wants to say. Would it be okay with everybody if we went off of YouTube? Let me see if we get her logged back in. Yeah, I just. Why don't we go ahead and take Ms. Zavala's recommendation while we're waiting? All right. Uh, Your Honor, it is my recommendation at this time that parental rights be terminated on both parents, mom based solely on her relinquishment um, and um, dad based on the other grounds outlined. Um, Dominic is just flourishing where he is, um, has a great bond um, with, with the hopeful adoptive family. Um, and um, it, it's my understanding that nobody has any um, plans or desire to move him from that placement, but I would ask that if there was any thought to move him to please set a hearing on that first. Um, but I don't believe that that's, that's in the cards. I do believe that um, this would be in Dominic's best interest. I am so sorry to the court it, for that. It, it's no problem. We, we, we were waiting for you, so it's fine. Thank no you. Thank you. I, I honestly have no idea when it cut out on, on my lunch break at work and the wind keeps knocking it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a lovely day. Um, you would just basically were telling us that you're, that uh, you had 10 months of sobriety, but your family does not. And, yes. Uh, okay. So, um, you know, I, being, judge, I'm sorry. Can we bring up that YouTube issue? Yeah, and and do Ms. Rangel, I just I did want to remind you we are on YouTube. If there's anything you would like to say, everyone has agreed. I can stop that YouTube feed if if that would make you more comfortable. No, that's that's all right. Um, you know, as far as placement within my family is concerned for Dominic, I don't see a world in which that would be a better choice than the person that he is currently with now. Um, as his mother, the best decision that I could have made for him was allowing him to be happy, healthy, and cared for without having the trauma of losing the only mother that he has ever known. Um, she is who brought him home from the hospital. Her and her husband have taken care of him wonderfully at that, and he is healthy, happy, and thriving. It is my wish in terminating my rights that if she is willing, that that become his adoptive parents. And I hope that the court does understand my wishes, and, and I hope off the record. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. I'll say on the matter because of this technical issue. Um, I'm I'm very sorry about that, Your Honor. No, it's no problem, Ms. Rangel. I I just I, I wanted to give you your opportunity because it's 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 very refreshing to hear a parent um uh, say the things that you have said. Um I mean I, you've been as candid with me as I think anybody possibly could be. And I think you've made a decision uh, based on the best interest of your child. Um, you know, nobody had to talk you into that. You came to that conclusion on your own. Um, but I will say to you, when you say that you've had 10 months sobriety and that no one else in your family has, then I am rooting for you to be the first. So thank you, Your Honor. Take care of yourself. Take care of your mental health needs. Take care of you and and be the first one that makes that goal of sobriety, long-term sobriety and stability. And, um, you know, I wish you the very best. Thank you. If I may, if I may interject, I'm sorry. Haley, I, I think both times you cut out when you were about to sort of make a request, and I'm not sure you realized you were cutting out. I think... I presumed what you were going to say is the request you wanted was that placement be the adoptive placement, but I think you cut out both times you were trying to make that request. Is that, that is, it? That's correct. Okay. Okay. I know from what you've told me before that you think he's in a wonderful place. And, and I think we all think he's in a great place. Um, I, you know, absent some, you know, massive change in circumstance, I, I think that's exactly what will happen. 
And I mean, I think that's their full intent and that's what we all want. So, um, you know, hopefully that will come to fruition and, you know, it'll be up to them what they decide your relationship would be with Dominic going forward. Um, but, um, I, I hope all of that works out well for you. And, and I really, I can't stress enough, you know, we're all in your corner. You can do this and, and you just get out there and be the first. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the support that St. Francis CPS and this court has given me. It has been a huge help to my recovery in my life. Well, you're, you're very welcome, but we all know that that success is yours and yours alone because nobody can get you there. You have to do it yourself. Thank you. All right, then. Um, at this time, then, I do find by clear and convincing evidence it is in the best interest of the child on parental rights between the child and his mother based solely on her voluntary affidavit of relinquishment of parental rights uh, under the K grounds and under the best interest of the child. Um, I likewise find by clear and convincing evidence in the, it is in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the presumed father, Eric Rangel, and the child based on the D, E, N, and O grounds and best interest of the child. Due to the facts that have been put into evidence regarding the unknown father, I am going to make a finding to terminate the parental rights of the unknown father, if any, based on his failure to register with the paternity registry uh, under uh, 161.002 subsection B3. I'll name the department as permanent managing conservator and dismiss all court-appointed attorneys at this time after the appropriate de novo and appellate timeframes expire. Council, just be reminded that um, I have rendered in court today, so your de novo timeframes do begin to run. And please do not file any notice of appeal if you're instructed to do so until a final order has been signed and adopted by the referring court. Ms. Zavala, of course, will remain in the case as the child's attorney and guardian at bottom. Again, Ms. Rangel, thank you so much um, for you know stepping up and doing what was right for Dominic. I appreciate it. I think everybody does. And uh, very, very best of luck to you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank y'all. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Trout, my understanding is that in the Pena matter, we probably are going to be extending that. Judge, I really only got to speak to um, TD yesterday. Um, on that, he was still trying to get in touch with his client, so he has not given me an answer whether he wants to ask for yeah. that or not. As a, my, um, my investigator on this case that, that did the groundwork on this, she's traveling. She was going to be calling in from an airport, so that was another reason I asked or mentioned uh, Miss Katie, um, due to both parents just getting attorneys and my person yeah. calling in from an airport. So I don't know exactly okay. where the attorneys stand on that. Well, what I'd like to do is get everybody in. Let's check on it real quick, and then maybe we can get that out of the way and give Ms. Taylor, give all of us just a real short break before 1.30. Yes, ma'am. Um, I did fail to say on, on the Rangel case, I did want to add that there would be no change in the child's placement without an agreement or a hearing on that issue. Yes, ma'am. So just, you know. I, I, wrote, I, I wrote that down as Ms. Zavala asked for it, so I, I've, I've got it in there. Yeah, you know, if Ms. Zavala, what Ms. Zavala wants, Ms. Zavala gets. <laughs> I love that. Can I apply that at home, too? Yeah, sure. Just tell Felipe I said that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, we are here today set for an adversary hearing. We are conducting this through the Zoom program under a finding of good cause and by agreement of the parties. Uh, we are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record. Daniel Drive for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm, I'm Tate Eldridge. I represent the mother, Ricky Armijo. We're, uh, she's, she's, she and I both are present ready. P.D. Hammonds for the father, Ruben Pina, ready to proceed, Judge. Stacey Zavala on behalf of the children here and ready. Okay, um, so I'm, I know you all were visiting in a breakout room. Do we have any agreements? We do, Your Honor. You, you want to do it, T.D., or you want me to? Go ahead, Tate. So both of our clients are together. So TD and I both talked to them together. 
um, they understand what's going on. It's a brand new case. Uh, the child is still, one of the kids is still in the hospital. So they, they agree to placement uh, with the department uh, right now. And they just want the chance to work their services and uh, would act, they're asking for some time to be able to, to see the kids. Uh, and they, they know it's going to be supervised, but just at some point they'd like to, to see the kids and, uh, you know, they want to work on giving you guys some, or the department some names and try to get some family placement as, but I know this is all brand new, but that's, that's what they're asking for, but they agree to uh, a placement right now. Okay. Mr. Hammonds, that's understanding you and your client. Yes, judge. All right. And Mr. Trout is the department seeking any kind of child support or medical support at this time? Not at this time, your honor. All right. And, uh, we obviously will be uh, wanting parents to work services. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, and Ms. Zavala, uh, are you on board with this? Um, I am, Your Honor. I would ask for a UA screen before visitation because of health needs. All right, and I do want a little bit of an update on the baby's uh, condition and progress. So, um, but uh, Ms. Arm Miho and Mr. Pena, I, I'll approve the agreement. We'll name the department as temporary managing conservator. And uh, based on, you know, finding of some continuing and ongoing danger to the children to be, uh, to remain at home at this time. Uh, you will have an opportunity to work services before our next hearing. Uh, the department will meet with you and you all will go through all that extensively and, and we'll be sure you know what, what we need you to do. Um, I'm not going to order any child support or medical support because I want you to use your resources to work your services at this point in time. Um, all right. That being said, um, can I get an update about well, both children for that matter, but placement and, and then just on the baby's health? So Sophia still remains in the NICU. We don't have an updated release date at this time. Um, she is, she had some x-rays done. So they, she is looking at having osteogenesis imperfecta. Um, they're still doing further testing to confirm which at which level she's at. The last update I had from the hospital, she had approximately five to six fractures. Um, they're assuming that it was probably from childbirth. Um, she fluctuates on room air and oxygen and from having a nasal cannula to feed uh, due to the pain from the fractures. So, you know, she, she does a little bit better and then she retracts as the pain gets intense from the fractures. So they're very careful with manipulating her in the bed. Um, they just said it's, it's just going to be a process for her until they can get her stabilized enough to, to be able to be released. Um, Samuel's doing well in his foster placement. Um, he, we just received his drug test results back. So we'll be following up with medical on that to see if there's any additional screens that need to be done. He tends to gasp sometimes. I talked to Ms. Armijo about that yesterday. Um, at times he'll just kind of like gasp, like it almost like he's gasping for air a little bit, but not, but he doesn't seem to struggle breathing at all. So we're just going to follow up with that and kind of see, see what that, what that's about. But he seems to be doing well in placement. All right. And he tested positive. Is that correct? He did. He tested positive for methamphetamines. Okay. Do we know who the caseworker is going to be? Has somebody been assigned? Marissa Herrera. All right. Um, then I'll see everybody back for a status hearing May 23rd of 2023. That'll be on a nine o'clock docket. So uh, to the parents, your attorneys will make sure you know uh, where to be or where to log in. And uh, like I said, between now and that hearing, uh, we'll get everybody going on service plans and, and everything that you need to be doing. And judge, if and I, I may, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, no, I just was going to go ahead and order the UA screen so we could take a look at that. Um, we'd also like, I got an email just saying, we'd like to request, uh, and I'll get an order done, an expedited order on the home study. There's some fictive kin. Um, I believe the investigator had talked to or run a report on already before. Um, she's fictive kin. She showed up at the office, is willing to take the children um, and hope to build a relationship with some of the uh, older siblings. Um, but 
we're asking that we could go ahead and run a, a expedited home study on them. Also. Okay, we'll order the home study on them. And then I just wanted to clarify. So we'll get parents to drug screen hair and UA. And as soon as we've got clean UAs, then they can start having in-person visits. With one child still in the hospital, obviously, you know, we'll see how that develops, but they could at least go up and see the baby. Okay. But all right then. Um, um, yes. I apologize. Um, the older child, Samuel, is placed with a, a local foster family that I've worked with before. Um, I feel like it's going to be a good fit. I'm quite open to, to fictive kin home studies, all of that. But um, I, I did just want to double check. They they had a pre, pre-planned trip, um, planned short driving trip. Um, Samuel's just kind of getting used to them and bonding with them. Um, there was some question about whether whether he could go with them on that that trip. I really have no objection to that. It would be good for him to continue that bonding process with the family. Um, but but I think there's been some question about whether he needed to go to respite care. I just hate to see him moving all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know if that's coming from St. Francis and not DFPS. I, I don't know. Are they going to be gone for any length of time? I mean, or is it just... No, it's just okay. a Easter weekend. I think from April 8th until possibly the Monday. I, I may have the comeback date wrong, but just a, a long weekend kind of trip. Okay, no, I'm fine with that. Especially if you've worked with them before. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. All right, does anybody have anything else? And just to clarify, Judge, you ordered hair and UA? Yeah. Okay. And that's about today? Or do you want to give it to uh, I'll tell you, it's getting it's getting later already into the afternoon. I'd say by four o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. ED has nothing further, Judge. All right. I appreciate everybody appearing today and working this out. And uh, I'll see everybody back May 23rd. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you all. I still don't have anybody else in the waiting room. So, y'all tell me. Can you just call it? There's a couple of things that came up when we were talking just then, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Jackson has not had any contact with his client. Um, at this point, Mr. Henderson's um, not really wanting an argument on anything, but uh, his client, he doesn't, doesn't believe that he may be dead and would like paternity testing ordered. Um, and then I'll let Mrs. Zavala speak on, she possibly has an issue, but I'll let her speak on that. So Mr. Jackson, are you wanting to extend the adversary hearing or? Yes, ma'am. I was going to ask uh, that it be extended or continued and uh, give me an opportunity to try to reach out to my client, uh, maybe productive or not. And hopefully, uh, Mr. Henderson's client can get the ball rolling on the paternity testing in the interim. Well, we gotta we gotta take TMC before we could do any genetic testing. Okay. So, uh, any I mean anybody in opposition to the request to extend? No, Your Honor. No, ma'am. No. Okay, Ms. Zavala, what? What issue do you have? Well, I was I, I was having Kelly look at it because I was um I know when y'all sent this case over to me that you said it was a sibling case. When I saw Zach's name, I was afraid that maybe I had represented him in the past. I got Kelly to confirm it was just the kids. Um the kids did end up did end up going to Mr. Chenault. So I met with him at his home several times. Um, but I just wanted to make sure council was aware of, of that connection. I did confirm I, I did not actually represent Mr. Chenault. Okay. Anybody got any heartburn with Ms. Zavala remaining in the case as the children, child's ad litem? Judge, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I don't know if my client will or not. Okay. Well, for now, we'll just leave Ms. Zavala in play. And, and if we're going to extend, we can, we can deal with that. We'll just we'll just kick that can down the road. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. April 13th, correct? April 13th. Okay. Okay. And Your Honor, real quick before we go on this one, um, I got an email, I believe, last night from Tasia McIntyre, who's on here with us. Uh, I think there was a, I don't know if it's been filed yet, the travel letter. It's been filed. Um, the yes, family sir. that has the child right now uh, is going on an Easter trip and they're going to be going around. So it'd be out of state to Oklahoma and back. Um, and then they got another trip planned later in the month. Um, but I just want to let the court be aware of that, that they did file a travel letter on that. Okay. All right. So the first trip is out is to Oklahoma and back. They're leaving. It looks like tomorrow and coming back on the ninth. Um, going to Oklahoma to the mother-in-law's house for Easter. Um, okay. There's also on Thursday they got to go to Fort Worth to take their biological child to a doctor's appointment. So they'll be driving around. Okay, that one's in state, so I don't think that even requires my approval. But but uh, no problem with them doing the Easter trip. Everybody knows that Oklahoma is God's country. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that, Your Honor, that is also the the mother in law that they're going to visit is actually their backup caregiver with their CPA. Um, so that is who respite would be if they need it. So that's where they're going. Okay. All right. Did, this good. child's just in regular foster care, right? Not with uh, any. You know, okay. Not in a special specialized home. Is that what you're asking, Todd? Uh, if, if no, if they were with any sort of uh, relative. Oh, okay. I just was, I think my client had been told that the child was <clears throat> released from the hospital and was back with mom. And I said, I do not believe that's accurate, but I just wanted to, I didn't see how that could be accurate, but I wanted <laughs> to make sure. No, it was with Boston. Okay. All right, then we'll reset and I'll see you guys back on this uh, on the 13th.